Next, we'll study while loops in the Arduino programming language. Continuing to explore loop option, here is one loop option. This is a while loop example. Leave the joystick and the LED set up as previously set up. However, if that setup has been since disconnected, what you need to do is connect pin 2 of the RoboRed board to the joystick Z axis. That's going to be the push button. And connect pin 7 of the RoboRed board to the LED. And these are bricks. Next, open Lecture 3 Demo 2 Sketch. We'll take a look at that sketch. At the top of the sketch, we have the setup function. Of course, we've seen that before. Before the setup function, we are declaring a variable called Z inactive state. Well, Z implies the Z button or the joystick button that's on pin 2. We want to know what the inactive state is. That means when the button is not pressed, what is the state? So, we've declared this Boolean variable, which is a place to store that initial state of the push button. Setup function, you recall, runs one time at power up. So, at power up, it runs one time and it assigns pin 2 as an input and pin 7 as an output and that makes sense because we have hardware connected above as listed here z-axis button and the LED brick. Next thing we do in the setup function is we read pin 2. Well what was pin 2? That was the z-axis, the joystick button. So read the z button and store that initial state as the value z in active state. So again what's the net result? At power up we check the switch to see what the normal state is. If the joystick button is not pressed, what is that state? Store it right here. So we set that, what we're calling a flag or a variable, to match the Z button normal, unpressed, inactive state. Next thing we do is the main loop, which is pretty simple. This is where the while stuff is happening. We're going to loop while the button is pressed. Here's how we do that. We do a read of the switch, and then we say, is it not equal to? If the current read of the switch is not equal to what the initial state was, that was the inactive state that we set up in the setup function, if it's not equal to the current state, that means the button has been pressed. If the button's pressed, the while condition is satisfied. The while looks at everything within the parentheses. says while some condition is true, it's going to do everything that's enclosed within the curly brackets. So in this case, while what condition is true? Well, while the button is pressed. While the button is pressed, do everything within the curly brackets. Let's take a look at what's within the curly brackets. We have a digital write to pin 7. What are we writing to pin 7? Well, we're doing a read of pin 7 and inverting that. We're saying, whatever pin 7 is right now, give me back the opposite, send that to pin 7. So the net result is we reverse the state of the LED connected to pin 7. Next, we delay or wait 250 milliseconds or a quarter of a second. That makes the blinking visible. Then we go back again. Here's how the while function works. It encounters this curly bracket, goes back to the top and says, is that button still pressed? If the button is still pressed, it does it again, does another blink. Checks again, button still pressed, another blink, another blink, another blink, as long as the button's pressed. Once the button is released, the while looks at this parenthetical statement here, says, okay, that evaluates to a false because the button's not pressed. It's the same as it was at the beginning of the power-up, so it's not pressed. So we don't do any of this stuff in the curly brackets. We continue on. In this case, it reaches the end of the loop function, and then it goes back and does the loop again, checks the while. If the button's still not pressed, goes past it, keeps checking the button over and over again. This concludes the video on while loops. In the next video, we'll explore functions and the defined compiler directive.